welcome Skawanetti and thank you for being here. Sego, sego, guego. Yamagoa, Samantha. I'm very uh, happy to be invited and I thank you for making that happen. Thank you also to Carol Fabricant, who's working behind the scenes to make this all go so smoothly. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about my work tonight. Carol's gonna to be helping me with the slides. So Carol, if we could advance to slide number two, my, sl my first slide. Um, I, oh, hang on a second. We got some technical little something I gotta figure out here. Okay. Um, Yes, I'm gonna tell you a tiny bit about myself and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about um, Time Traveler TM, which is the machinima that is shown in the exhibition at the Courier. And then I'll be telling you a little bit about other works, works that pre came before it and works that came after it. So hopefully I won't, uh, anyway, hopefully I'll be able to just jam it all into like about 45 minutes so that we can have some time to ask questions at the end. Um, yes, I'm so not I'm so not used to not being in charge of my own slides, so that's going to be fun. Um, but I'm looking at them at a, on another monitor. So when I'm that's what's happening. I'm looking at you. Looking at the other monitor for for all of you out in viewer land. And hi, mom. I hope you're there. I remembered. <laughs> okay, game changing world building and indigenous futurism. Uh, that's um, what I think my work is about these days. So let's advance to the next slide and I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. So first of all, my name is Skawanadi and uh, I am of the turtle clan. So I'm an, that's an individual and I'm just, I give this slide, I, I show people this because many people, even here in Jojage slash Montreal, Mohawk territory, a lot of people don't know that this is how Iroquois society was constructed or is, was, was uh, how it works. So an individual is part of a clan, I'm part of the turtle clan and the clans form a community. My, or also in Canada, uh, they're called a band and in the States it's called a tribe and in my tribe or my community is Gahnawage. Um, my nation is the Ganyangehaga, formerly and still sometimes of course known as Mohawk. And then the Mohawk are one of six nations of the Hir Iroquois Confederacy, which is also known as the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. So I just thought I'd let you know about that. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, you heard in my bio that I uh, talk about my perspective as an urban Mohawk woman and as a cyberpunk avatar. Here she is, her name is XOX. And uh, she's uh, showing up more and more in my work these days, but she was very much behind the scenes when I first started making uh, Machinima. Next slide, please, um, Carol. Um, uh, you also heard that uh, this is like the visual aspect of the bio that Samantha just read. This is our Abtech logo and Aboriginal Territories and Cyberspace is a research network that I co-founded with my partner, Jason Edward Lewis, uh, to make sure that Indigenous people kind of showed up in cyberspace. Next slide, please. And what do I mean when I say cyberspace? I mean this, si software, websites, apps, video games, virtual worlds, machinima, and whatever else is coming next. So we felt that, um, you know, Native people, we have, um, we have been the subject of movies and um, mostly movies, stories, you know, uh, the imagination of the, of oftentimes European white males, you know, the photographs, Edward Curtis uh, took lots of beautiful pictures of us, you know, but we often didn't have those tools ourselves just historically to uh, represent ourselves. But we felt that when, you know, the, when the internet and websites and cyberspace came around, uh, a lot of us had the access, a lot of us native artist folks and other, other might makers, we had the, we could affect the look and feel of cyberspace ourselves too. We were in on the ground floor, like along with everybody else. And so that's what Abtech, that was what we were, we meant to do, what we were trying to do. Uh, next slide, please. Abtech's biggest project by far is the Initiative for Indigenous Futures, where Abtech is a um, research network of individuals, if is a research network of um, institutions across Canada. And I could talk about that for quite a while, but I won't today, but I encourage you if you're interested to look at the website. But we are um, 
oh, I think that's an old website. <laughs> no, no, but I think it'll redirect you. Um, and you know, we're really thinking about uh, making sure Indigenous people are seen in the future. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, we see, again, talking about someone like Edward Curtis or those ho old Hollywood films, you know, Native people, Indigenous people, we've often been used as a literary device to represent the past. Uh, a lot of people don't even think we really exist still, <laughs> or, you know, we're, if we do, well, we're not really authentically Native. Uh, and so we think that um, that's a problem. It's a problem if the greater society thinks that about us, and it's a, it's a problem when even ind Indigenous people think that about themselves. We see some really awful statistics for Native people in Canada, which I think are mirrored in, um, in the United States, Australia, uh, where we have the highest dropout rate, the highest suicide rate, and the highest incarceration rate. So I wondered, you know, geez, are, maybe we're not seeing ourselves in the future. Could that be why we don't go on? You know, I mean, that's one, one way of asking the question. So this initiative for Indigenous Futures is all about trying to uh, bring together people uh, and encourage artists and thinkers and makers and scholars to uh, create images and imaginings of Indigenous people in the future. Okay, let's go to the next slide very quickly, uh, which is, let's go back a little bit in time. Next picture, please. So the first artistic work in which I truly set out to imagine Indigenous people was called, in the future, Imagining Indians in the 25th Century. Uh, this piece was created for, it was a commission for the Edmonton Art Gallery, and it was commissioned in, in the year 1999 for the great big millennial celebrations that were coming up. And so what I did was I created uh, a website. This was, a, I call it a paper doll slash time travel journal website. And it, I created a timeline of 10 major dates, one for each century, starting in 1490, so two years before Columbus showed up on these shores, and I went to 2490 so that I would also have dates in the future. And I had a central figure, you see her here, Garakwahawi Kapozo, I called her, and she visits each uh, date and she has a specific, um, a, an appropriate outfit for each date and a journal entry. And so, um, and it's through the journal entries that you can see uh, her perspective as a Mohawk woman in the 20th century and how she sees these past, uh, the historical events and the future events. So we can just go through a couple of them. This one she's wearing, uh, so, you know, sorry, just go back for one second. You know, she's wearing uh, an outfit because from Star Trek because, well, not only was that one of my favorite science fiction television programs, uh, but, or science, favorite programs, but it was, it was also one of the only places I ever saw a native person in the future with Chakotay uh, from Voyager. And then the next slide shows another in indigenous character that I was very delighted to find who was in Snow Crash, his name was Raven. So this is not him, but this is a, an outfit that a character in that book wears. Then we also have on the next slide where um, Gadzitsahawi visits Pocahontas in the past. And then in the next one, these are not in chronological order for the piece. <laughs> She's at the uh, intergalactic powwow. And so, um, so I made this piece and I thought, um, and I did a lot of research as I do. I, I read a lot about different historical figures. I watched, you know, Star Trek a lot. And I imagined I had already, you know, I, I am a science fiction fan. So I've read a good amount of books. And so this is how I, I built up uh, the worlds that I, referred to in the journal entries. Anyway, but of course, I mean, I don't know about of course, but for myself, the way I often work is I create, I, I have, you know, all these ideas that I want to put all into one artwork. And this artwork, Imagining Indians in the 25th Century, well, I intended to have four characters, each with 10 different outfits, you know, that you could like, and they could maybe interact. And there's just all these things that I wanted to have happen. Um, and, you know, but time was getting shorter and I was had only made, you know, this one uh, character with these 10 outfits. And so I was, and people were like, just stop. This is a nice project just as it is, just let it be finished. So I did do that. But, you know, one day someone said to me, oh, that's such a nice project, such a girl project. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, paper dolls? 
journaling. And I was like, oh, I guess that's like a girl activity. Okay. Um, so, you know, very gendered, but like, let's set that aside if, if you don't, if you will permit me for the moment. So I was, I was still remembering that I had this, you know, the idea of doing other characters. And, you know, I, I had this one character I was very interested in. And um, I was asked to do, uh, I was asked to do this writing project, this interesting project in which I was asked to respond to uh, an a, a, a artifact, actually, that uh, uh, the uh, Glenbow in um, Alberta had acquired. And for those of you who, who may have seen, I wish I had put the picture in here, but um, anyway, it, it almost doesn't matter. But for those of you who have seen Time Traveler TM, it is the panorama that sort of precursor to the modern movie uh, screen in which, which a person actually turns the screens with a crank. Anyway, uh, the right, so I started to write, you know, uh, another story from a male perspective, this male character in the future. And I, he was responding to this, this artifact. Uh, and so those two, you know, so that was great. I had written those things, but I was like, okay, you know, I really want to make a visual aspect of this, of what I've written here. And, you know, if, uh, if, if paper dolls are for girls, well, then what do boys play with? So of course I thought video games, which we all know girls and boys both play video games <laughs> and with paper dolls too, I think. But um, so, but that was my, what I just, you know, I was like, okay, how can I make this look like a video game? And I just didn't know, I just didn't know how. I mean, the, I would ask around, I, I looked around, but you know, most people were like, well, you gotta do 3D animation. And I was like, I don't know how to do 3D animation. And then I even, I even actually did try to do 3D animation. I kind of won this cool contest and I sent them my script and that these people were going to animate, you know, through 3D animation, they were gonna create a, you know, write, like make a, an animation. But they kept, they're like, this script is way too long. We need to cut it. Cut, 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 cut. And I was like, finally, I was like, I don't even recognize this anymore. So I was like, I'm sorry, I have to withdraw from this project. I can't, I don't want to do it because <laughs> it's not, it's not good enough. So next slide. 2006, I think. Next slide. Uh, someone showed me Second Life. And for those of you who don't already know, Second Life is probably still the, well, it is the largest user created 3D virtual world community, also known as a massively multiplayer online world. And I was completely smitten. So what it means is that this, there's a, it's a 3D virtual world, but you have tools in the world to build things for, for your, yourself in the world. So you get this default avatar, which you can customize, and then you, you know, have, you can build things like a little ring or a skyscraper and everything in between. Um, and someone was like, you can, uh, you can make machinima with this. And I'm like, what's machinima? And I learned that machinima is making movies in virtual environments. And that's what I did. Uh, so I will be showing you, I'll tell you about first about my first time, my first um, machinima, and then I'll show you a little bit of it because it's always good to see a little bit. So next slide, please. Time Traveler TM. So Time Traveler TM is very, you, if you look at Imagining Indies in the 25th century, and then you watch Time Traveler TM, you will see many crossovers. You will see that, you know, I was so interested, I was still so interested in the historical events that I had researched for Imagining Indians that I, I wanted to bring them to life a little bit more in Time Traveler TM. And so what happens in Time Traveler TM is we meet Hunter, a Mohawk man who lives in the year 2121. And in that time, they have a technology, their edutainment part, you know, one of their many edutainment systems called Time Traveler TM. So it ostensibly uh, allows you to visit past events, kind of like the holodeck, but like a VR holodeck, you know, instead of going into holodeck, you just put on the glasses and you're there in this recreated historical event. Um, but so yes, where am I? Okay, I'm going to show you a little tiny bit just so you see what it looks like. And one other thing, uh, I think, no, I think, uh, I think the first few, it's just for probably a two minute video that we're going to watch now, and it should give you a decent introduction. And if not, I'll fill in the blanks when we finish on the other side.
My name is Redorts Deerhouse. Redorts means hunter in Mohawk. That's what people call me, hunter. I'm a Mohawk, not a Mohican, okay? We survived. Like my father and my father's father, I can use a bow and arrow like nobody's business. I can also paddle a canoe faster than most speedboats and more quietly than your mother's orgasm. And like the legends say, I can walk the high steel without a worry. Hell, I can do gymnastics up there. All these traditional skills would have made me one serious breadwinner once, a couple of hundred years ago when us Indians still made up the majority of Turtle Island. But today, in an over-mediated, hyper-consumerist North America without enough room for everybody, I have to be content with being a ruthless, efficient, cold-blooded killer. That pisses me off. Okay, cold-blooded killer is not exactly the politically correct term for what I do. Bounty hunter sounds better. Hired gun also works, though it lacks sophistication. I did spend some time in the Marine Corps, also like most of my relatives. But you know, fighting other people's wars is starting to get boring. I'm thinking maybe I need a new aim in life. Screen. On. Traveling through time these days is easy, thanks to Time Traveler TM. Witness important historical events or interact with the people who made them happen. You can even customize your own events and visit with your great 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 grandmother. All customized characters must have existed. It's easy and fun. Visit www.timetravelertm.com. <laughs> Time Traveler TM. On. Yeah, they use these in schools for history class. It takes all the known facts about a particular event in history, a speech, a battle, a day in the life of, and recreates it for you in living color. It's basically like going into a full-on 3D chat room and hanging out with famous dead people, like Geronimo. I'm interested in a little hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's one of my specialties. So, let's try Indian and Massacre. More than 86,000 hits, but most of them talk about Indians being massacred. I want to know about Indians who are doing some massacring. Let me try the trusty random function. Figure odds are good that I'll get to see some good, old-fashioned killing, at least. I figure a little visiting with my ancestors, a little recon with my role models, could do me some good right now. Give me a new perspective. Go ahead. Call a vision quest. Just gonna get some, uh, get myself back. Okay, so we can go to the next uh, screen just to just to get out of there. <laughs> um, so I guess I also wanted to say that Second Life not only uh, not only did I think it looked like a video game, which was great, but I realized that Second Life to me was like the future. <laughs> I felt like it was this place where you know people could fly around through improbable architecture, you know, and we could telepathically, through chat, you know, we could teleport, we could telepathically send our thoughts to other users. We could represent ourselves the way that we wanted to be represented. So I, I really thought it was the right medium for this piece where I want to show people in the future. Um, I also wanted to tell you that uh, remind me, you know, watching that episode reminds me of like starting to learn how to make machinima. I did not know how to make machinima when I started this project, you know, but I, so I, that scene where you see Hunter flying past the Google sign, you know, I can't tell you how many times I shot that scene. I did it wrong so many times. I shot it at the, you know, I was changing my window size, not thinking late about how later I'm going to have to put each of these clips into a timeline. It has to be the same size. I shot it at a fairly low resolution. You'll see as you watch further episodes how, well, first of all, next by the next episode, the resolution gets better. And then my team, because um, I don't make this alone, I make this with wonderful people from who mostly come from uh, Jason's program, Computation Arts at Concordia University. Um, they, um, <laughs> he's eating. <laughs> anyway, do you, do you hear him? <laughs> They, um, 
they helped me very much. And uh, without them, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't look this good. So anyway, episode two, uh, I'm just gonna sort of go through very quickly what happens in, in that episode two. Uh, what you see is he, he learns about this Minnesota massacre uh, in episode one. And he's like, you know, hmm, that sounds, he learns about it from the point of view, of course, of the colonists, but like, he's like, I think I'd like to hear the other side of the story. And so he goes to this, uh, to the actual moment where the Dakota Sioux uprising uh, occurs or, or begins. And uh, of course he does get a whole other perspective. So that's what you'll see in episode two. Next episode, please, Carol. I mean, not episode, but you know what I mean, slide. Um, the Oba crisis is something that uh, perhaps uh, people in the United States are not as aware of, but it was a major uh, event that took place here in Canada in 1990. It took place very close by to here, Montreal, uh, with people from both my reserve and our sister reserve, Gunasadage. And uh, it was a 78 day standoff in which, um, in which the Canadian army was brought in against our people. And uh, anyway, it was a pretty big deal and I had to do an episode about it. And so in the, in the picture you're seeing here is, an, is a recreation of an actual photograph uh, that was quite famous and probably could be quite recognized. Next episode, okay, I think I have, a, I have another little video here. I don't even remember what video I put in here. So let's just play it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Where to next? Who is this Richard Oakes? Never heard of him. Welcome to Alcatraz, little lady. Registration is right over there. After that, get yourself to the main cell block. All women are on kitchen duty today. <laughs> Can we get a picture of you two with the turkey? Richard Oaks driving the pickup. Come on! Let's load it up, boys. Hi, how you doing? Nice day today. Richard, do you have a statement? Yes, we do. To the great white father and his people, fellow citizens, we are asking you to join with us in our attempt to better the lives of all Indian people. We, the Native Americans, Reclaim the land known as Alcatraz Island in the name of all American Indians by right of discovery. We wish to be fair and honorable in our dealings with the Caucasian inhabitants of this land and hereby offer the following treaty. We will purchase said Alcatraz Island for $24 in glass beads and red cloth, a precedent set by the white man's purchase of a similar island 300 years ago. We will give to the inhabitants of this island a portion of that land for their own to be administered by the Bureau of Caucasian Affairs in perpetuity for as long as the sun shall rise and the rivers go down to the sea. We will further guide the inhabitants in the proper way of living. We will offer them our religion, our education, our life ways in order to help them achieve our level of civilization and thus raise them, all our white brothers, up from their savage and unhappy state. We offer this treaty in good faith and wish to be fair and honorable in our dealings with all white men. Alcatraz is not an island. Alcatraz is an inspiration. It is the idea that you can control your own destiny and self-determine your own future. Richard, how long are you prepared to stay here? A long time. So yes, in case you couldn't tell, it was the occupation of uh, that occurred in 1969. And um, what happens, uh, what else happens besides uh, that amazing 
speech by Richard Oakes is Hunter meets a woman named Garaku Howie who is from our time. And uh, let's see the next slide. Actually, I, I need to uh, change my view options here again. Every time we look at a video, I exit exits my full screen mode for some reason. Okay, yes. So they they meet and um, fall in love. I, not, I hope I'm not giving away too much. Um, but yeah, she because she but some a weird thing happens. There's a glitch in the system, and she gets a pair of the time traveler glasses. But for some reason, she can travel. Giving a talk here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, she, um, she gets a pair of the glasses. There's a glitch in the system and for some reason she can time travel. So next, um, next, next slide, please. Is this a video? I think it is. Yes. So I'm just trying to show you a little, this is a 75 minute mission. So I'm trying to show you like a little clump of videos, talk about it and then, um, keep it moving. Here goes. Right on time. Hey. Hey. Missed you. <laughs> I like your outfit. Thanks. You look pretty spectacular yourself. Looks like you've got a plan here. Well, since I didn't think a battle immersion would be much fun for you, I worked the settings so that we could participate in the Festival of the Dry Month. I play Smoking Mirror, one of the major Aztec gods, and you get to be Salt Woman, my wife. Your wife? Yes, one of four. <laughs> what? I don't think so. Hey, I thought it would be romantic. Plus, each of the four wives represents a goddess. Wouldn't you like to experience life as a deity? Hmm. I might be able to deal with that. Let me introduce you. Salt Woman, this is Corn Maiden. We've been waiting for you. Flower Feather. Welcome. And Leopard Lady. Whatever. The best thing about this festival is that it's actually our job to walk through the city and receive praise and offerings from the locals. Well, let's not keep them waiting. So that was totally out of sync. <laughs> um, but anyway, I showed it to you. The, it's funny because I wanted to show it to you because I want to show you how how advanced um, our our machinima got, like from the first one to this one, episode seven, where we have an entire uh, we've recreated an entire historical precinct, like you know, geographical area or city um, or part of a city, and. Um, and made these amazing costumes and you know re really done a lot of customization. Okay, next next slide please. So the well anyway, the main thing that you um, that happens uh, is that basically at the end of this, you know, Hunter asks Garako Howie, they they realize that only she can time travel with these glasses. He can't, even with her glasses, he he's, has to stay in his time, you know, uh, even so he invites her to come and live with him in his time. And, you know, it's a big question of like, can, you know, should she leave everything she knows in our time or should she go into the future? And she chooses the future. So that's, that's the end, but there's lots of fun stuff along the way. And I hope you watch the whole thing. And let's go to the next slide, please. So uh, a, a really interesting thing happened for me after that, which is that uh, a curator invited me to show Time Traveler TM, but she was like, can we, um, and I'm so sorry, but her name just escaped me. I, I, wish, I'd, I wish I could remind, remember her. Oh, Jennifer Matotek, yes. Because I, thank you, Jennifer, for this wonderful opportunity because she um, thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we could show, uh, show these machinimas in some kind of installation? And I was like, oh my God, I've, always wanted to show them in in the spaces that they're in because many times we see hunter or guaco howie watching tv and so we set up three spaces we recreated three spaces from the machinimas in real life 
and then show the videos on the screen. So in here you see Hunter's apartment uh, and you know, right now it says media texture on his screen, but we were able to, so basically that's a little bit of a mistake. This is the machinima version. And next slide will show you the version that we created in the gallery, which I think is so gorgeous. An amazing research assistant, Erica Perot made the jet pack, like it looks super real. You know, and we got all these artifacts, a another amazing person. We found all these toy guns and, and stuff that are for his weapons wall and put that together. Had hired someone to make these seats that matched his seats in the, because uh, I couldn't find them anywhere on the entire internet. Those are <laughs> in real life. Next slide, please. So this is Greco Howie's bedroom. Please next slide in machinima version. And then here it is in the real life version. And there's a TV in the corner that you can't see in this picture. Next slide, please. This is their living room when they finally do move to the future and they have a fabulous apartment. Next slide, sorry. <laughs> And well, we definitely couldn't get the circular couch. So you had to use your imagination for that. But um, this gallery is next door to a library, a public library. And so they had tons and tons of books. So we were able to do the bookshelves with like absolutely no problem. Uh, so the next uh, slide, please. Oh, just a little, okay, next slide. That was just a little detail with an image from Scott Benesina Bandon, my friend who made, uh, we printed this digital print image that he had that was, and <laughs> turned it into a painting. So She Falls for Ages was my next machinima. I made that, uh, well, I made it throughout 2016, but it was completed in 2017. And it is a sci-fi retelling of the Haudenosaunee creation story. And if you advance slide, please, you can see um, if you know the creation story, which I'm not going to assume you do, but there are many different versions. And in common to all of them are just a few simple things. There's a pregnant woman, there's a tree, a very special tree, and the tree is uprooted. Oh yes, and this is all taking place in a place in, in sky world, okay? And it's somewhere above the heavens. The tree is uprooted, there is a hole, the woman falls through the hole and she lands on earth. She lands on a turtle, the back of a turtle, which is which is becomes Turtle Island. And many people say that Turtle Island is North America, but I think that Turtle Island is Pangaea, the original supercontinent. And I think this story is for everyone. Uh, in my version, I have Odzitsugayu as Sky Woman, and uh, I decided to make everyone. Uh, I, I wanted that this place above in the heavens or Sky World to be another planet, and I wanted them to be very technologically advanced. Um, and let me see, I have a little, oh, I don't think I have, what's the next slide? Oh, okay. So we can just go back a, a, back to this slide for a second more. Um, uh, basically, I think uh, that's enough that I, for me to tell you without a, a video, but um, it's uh, available on my website if you'd like to see it. And uh, what I'm trying to tell you is how the experience of making machinima, I was, you know, is so exciting because you're world building, okay? And so I'm, so here I imagined these people were our ancestors, but they're living in something that looks very much like futures we have imagined. And I tried to think about, um, I tried to think about artifacts or architecture that they would live in that when Sky Woman lands on Earth, she tries, she's trying to recreate that. So that is reflected. So her, it's reflected in the culture that she teaches her child and, and goes on to become what is now indigenous culture. So the, the domes that you're seeing in the background, these are the homes that they live in. And so I, but that's, you see these sky domes in Iroquois beadwork. And so this is the kind of thing I was trying to imagine. But what's interesting too for me is that I've been given opportunities to make things in real life that are coming from the machinima. And this, is, this has been something that sort of happened slowly and without me realizing that this is actually what, I, what, I, what the purpose of the machinima was in the first place. It was to, and it, to be able to imagine a future and make it real. So, but I, and so this is what I'm trying to show you in the next slide. This image is is a, a decoration, simply a decoration on the wall in one of the homes when we, in a scene that we see in She Falls for Ages. Uh, and it's rep, it, it uh, calls upon or, um, you know, it references 
uh, wampum belts uh, that people probably hopefully have seen uh, nowadays, but I mean, wampum belts from our past that are still present today. Uh, and so this digital image was just on this digital wall, right? This virtual wall. And uh, I had this exhibition and some, I went to my printer uh, and printed some images like the previous image that you saw is a flat image that was printed out and hung on a wall. And I see in this printer's place that he's got these, he does this kind of framing thing in which he can put really thick acrylic in front. He front mounts the work and puts, and puts the acrylic on it and it creates an object. And I was like, oh my God, let's try it. Let's try printing this digital artifact, this little image and turning it into an object. And so that's what this is. This is like this kind of, I call it tomorrow people wampum. Next image. I was also asked to do a public uh, artwork. And so I decided to make uh, the celestial tree. It's a, as you can see, so uh, you saw at the very, if you could just quickly flip back two slides and then come back, Carol, through another slide, sorry, three. So you see, I, we made an, we made a look like a logo slash emblem. Many of the characters are wearing this emblem. This emblem is everywhere throughout the movie. So if you come back to the tree that I made, I just use that emblem and I turn it, I, and I, since it's for uh, a public a street, I used street like fab, like it's the same metal kind of tube that a stop sign is made out of and the same reflective material that a stop sign, that uh, different street signs are made out of. Next slide. I think I'm, I'm trying to talk faster because I'm like at my 544 here. So, and I have one little clip I want to show you. Made the costume, wore it, took a picture. Next. <laughs> I'll just show you very quick. This is a two minute, trailer and we'll watch it. The Peacemaker Returns, sorry. Let me give you a, sorry, I think the next slide, I think there's two more slides. I, I should just tell you that I, yeah, this was a, an installation. It was a show that was created for children. So, uh, sorry, Carol, this isn't the, this is still not the one with the video. It's the next slide. And I'll just talk about this one for one second. Um, the, uh, we made this longhouse, longhouse of the future for people, kids to come inside and sit down and watch the Peacemaker Returns, which is the video. We also, I also made a whole bunch of wampum belts. Vox is the artist run center. When I say we, they're the ones who produced this, um, this beautiful sculpture. Okay, so, and one more thing to introduce it is the Peacemaker Returns is a sci-fi retelling of the Haudenosaunee Confederation story, the story of, of the peacemaker and bringing the five nations together and how that, that story can be perhaps be retold in the future. So can you please go to the next slide and press play? Oh, media not found. Okay, you know what? It's it's the, the universe is telling us that it's not time for this one. So sorry, you. Uh, this one's a little harder to see because it's not online anywhere, but it's really nice. Oh, is it happening? I, I think it says no, media not found, cool. Carol. So yeah. let's, let's just go ahead and go to the next slide. So yes, these are some of the wampum belts that were in that show. And um, it would have been cooler if you'd seen my little clip because you can see all the, all the uh, you know, virtual wampum belts and then you see them in real life. Uh, next slide, please. Ooh, yeah, just wanted to show you, like I also decided to dress as my avatar. So we have a picture of that. So this is called Dancing With Myself. And uh, the next, I'll just very quickly show you the project I'm working on right now. And then we will have, to, I hope there's questions because I'm racing through here. Are there any questions yet, uh, Samantha? We do have we do have one question, so we don't have tons. So feel free okay. to take your time and work through race. this. Great. I have a feeling you've, you've said everything and everyone's blown away and doesn't have questions, but okay. maybe we'll get more as we're getting closer to the end. Okay, wonderful. So Calico and Camouflage is my current project that I'm quite excited about. It is a fashion collection. And it was a fashion collection designed primarily or at first just for avatars. 
So if you would not mind showing me the next slide, showing them all the next slide, and me too. Uh, here you see um, basically what it is. It's made out of two articles of clothing that I have seen Mohawk people wearing, okay, a lot. One is the ribbon shirt. That's a traditional part of our regalia. Uh, and it's usually made with calico fabric. So for those of you who don't know, because a lot of people think calico is just a cat, it's not. Calico is also a nice little flower, little uh, patterned fabric that's usually flowers and um, or natural thing, natural objects like leaves or berries. And um, the other article of clothing, of course, are army pants. And so I talked about the Oka crisis, but you know, from really from Wounded Knee on to like the Dakota Access Pipeline to all the, you know, the, the various, um, mo you know, moments where we've had to face the military force of the state, you see people wearing camouflage and on military clothing. And so I thought it could be interesting to mix up the two and to make ribbon shirts with camouflage fabric and army pants with calico fabric. It's kind of simple actually. Um, and I gave my avatars uh, protest signs. So um, I made a whole collection. So there's, here's just a few of them. I'm just gonna show you. You can please uh, go ahead and take a second on each one. Here's No More Stolen Sisters. And there's Ne Dawi Ne Ungwe Hume Neha. The future is indigenous in Ganyangeha, the Mohawk language. And I can't believe I have to protest this. So um, this project interests, so I, I like this project for so many reasons, but uh, it was, honestly, it was the first time I thought of printing up my avatars and putting them on a wall maybe. And so I had the opportunity to do that uh, next slide for this festival that takes place every year in the freezing cold Montreal, February, March, um, called Art Souterrain or Underground Art. Some of you might know Montreal has got a reputation as the underground city because we've got all these tunnels connecting the metros and you can stay inside that way and not get too cold. So here she is on a wall in this mall and there's a few more of them. If you don't mind going ahead again, there's two more. L'avenir est en because of course we have to have some French uh, signs. And yes, next one. And this is l'eau c'est la vie or water is life. And um, so that was wonderful and very exciting. And But then I finally was like, wait a second. Well, what happened really, the story goes, I was um, making these avatars and I had wanted to make a fashion show in, I wanted to make a machinima fashion show. That's what I, you know, that's what I do. That's what I know how to do. I don't know how to put on a real fashion show. And so I was like, uh, I made the, I made all these costumes with my wonderful team, of course. And we start, you know, put them on this runway and I film it in Second Life. And I'm like, this is very boring. I don't, <laughs> this is not gonna be a good artwork. And so that happened. And then probably, it felt like the next day, but I don't know, some time passed, I suppose, or maybe not. But anyway, the Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto had a call for submissions to be part of the runway show. And I thought, hey, wait a second, these are just shirts and pants. I know how to sew. I think I, I can get this fabric printed up because we designed, you know, we designed the, the calico and camouflage ourselves as well. So we, we, so yeah, I applied for the show and I got accepted, which I couldn't believe and was so thrilled. And uh, then was, uh, then started sewing. So on the next slide, you can see the costumes that I made with also wonderful help Kathleen Deerhouse if you're out there she sewed most a lot of this stuff here with me she's my she's my right hand woman one of my amazing supporters and uh we put them on some mannequins but uh oh yes the fashion show was uh kind of canceled I mean it was postponed because of COVID um and it was it was not canceled but transformed into a virtual fashion show and not my kind of virtual fashion show but what we did was they asked uh they asked the designers to send the clothing to them they hired beautiful models who wore the clothes and they shot I so Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto folks filmed the models wearing the clothes and are creating a film that will be out in November so I'm very much looking forward to seeing that and I had uh, I asked some beautiful models to take some to take some photographs wearing the clothes. And uh, in the next slide, you will see these two beautiful people 
wearing the clothing. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, Garako Hawila Born and May's Longboat and Danny Chanfara took the pictures and Lisa Sim did their makeup. And that is another example of my clothes, uh, my, my virtual stuff becoming real. And it's exciting. Next slide. Nyawa, thank you. That's it. It's the, vir the hard thing about these virtual things is you can't hear people clapping, but I'm sure we have people clapping. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And um, I, I, got, I knew about your work, but hearing you speak about it that way, I really got a lot out of it. So I appreciate it. Um, I have questions, but I, we have a couple. So um, I'll ask them from the group. So one person asked something that we can answer, I think, pretty quickly, which is how many episodes did you create? And I think they're talking about Time Traveler Tim specifically, and that was nine, if I'm recalling correctly. Um, and <clears throat> another person, um, sorry. I have a yeah, <laughs> I'll just tell them, you know, of course you should go to the Career Art Museum if you can, but if you can't, the um, episodes are online and you can find them at, um, you know, if you, you can look at scalvinati.com and you can like kind of, you know, look around because it's like a kind of exploring site or you can go to www.timetravelertm.com slash episodes. Thank you. Um, yes, I don't know why my, my voice isn't cooperating with me. Um, <clears throat> happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Jeff asked sort of a, a big question. How do you see your work reflecting the world as we experience it today? <laughs> how do I see my work reflecting mm. the world say it again <laughs> how do you see your work reflecting the world as we experience it today I um I mean in all the ways I just showed I feel so um you know there's right I mean right the last piece is the most is the most okay I can I think that this, this work that you saw, Calico and Camouflage, is, was created, uh, we started working on it, oh, I guess 18 months ago or something. And you know, and I mean, and then came the Black Lives Matter protest, Black Lives Matter protests, you know, and suddenly it was sort of like, here are these, I have these avatar protesters, you know, and it made total sense, you know, I mean, actually, even even before uh, Black Lives Matter, there was protests going on uh, for, you know, water is life. The climate strike uh, was happening. Like, so, you know, these things, we put them in the mall and they just totally made sense. And now we're putting them up at Elephant Gallery. Sorry, I meant to give a plug to Elephant, my, my gallery, and uh, where the picture with the mannequins uh, was taken. Um, you know, we're putting those mannequins uh, in the space with the avatars on the walls. And it's going to, I hope, look like a demonstration. And I think, um, so I think my work, re there's a reflection. When we look at the work Dancing with Myself, in which I am dressing as my avatar, I'm talking about our relationships to our avatars. You know, here I've been making machinima all this time. Um, and I have developed a relationship to my avatar. I love her. And uh, I, I like how she represents me. But also, I wonder how she feels about me. Does she want to be a real girl like Pinocchio wanted to be a real boy? Um, you know, so I think that my work, you know, also, I mean, I show Indigenous people in the present almost as much as I show them in the future or the past. And I think that's very important, especially for, I actually, it's, it's important in different ways for both Indigenous people and non-Indigenous people. You know, I've had the most, I have a cherished memory, you know, of a young indigenous woman, when she learned that I made Time Traveler TM, she came up to me and hugged me and thanked me. And I, you know, and just, you know, she was so happy to see us in the future. <laughs> and so I think that's very important today, now, our lived experience to, to have that for people so that we can, ha you know, I'm not trying to predict the future, although yes, I would love to predict a be you know, peaceful future in which everyone is there's justice for all. But what I mean is that, you know, at least we can have a future to talk about and to say, well, I don't want that. 
you know, you see in Time Traveler TM, for example, uh, the power of the future, right? Where they win like money and Ferraris and, you know, all this stuff. And people are like, that's still so capitalist. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's one future. <laughs> that's true. And I think, um, you know, her folks on the, uh, in the room with us, the room with us, um, who are maybe less familiar with Second Life and virtual worlds. Um, I think I've had conversations with people like, uh, trying to explain, it's hard to explain sort of like that camaraderie or connection and world building that can happen virtually for, for uh, people who virtual engagement isn't or hadn't been part of their lives. But now in the last six months, seven months, um, it has had to become part of so many people's lives in a different way, obviously it's digital communication, but um, we know where I'm sure we'll see figures about how many people were delving into virtual worlds or playing video games in the time that they were home. Um, and so I, I'm wondering if, uh, as an extension of our uh, viewer question, if you are having, um, in addition to the work that, that you had just finished with the, the, the clothing line and the eventual fashion show that you'll see, something that you're thinking about now or a project that reshaped um, how you're looking at your work in Second Life? Because it's been, it's interesting to see you've had all these projects that start in uh, our world and go virtual and then come back to our world. So now that we're all in this virtual, real, what, what is what is real um, world, are there anything you're thinking about exploring or anything that became more, that kind of rose to the surface for you? Well, I'm, I'm very interested in clothing now um, because I realized that uh, clothing is, yeah, if you could, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you know, it's so universal. It's so political, you know, uh, the way we express ourselves through our clothing, even though we're wearing, I'm wearing mass marketed item right now, you know, I, you know, I feel the choices we make, even the choice to not wear clothing says something about who we are and, our position in the in society. Um, so that's something I'm very interested in. Uh, you know, I think the whole uh, if that if, yeah, perhaps the viewer, the Jeff, I think was your name, the question the questioner. You know, I think that's true. Today's experience, you know, if you mean our current experience of living um, of living online so much, um, it's, I'm not quite answering your question, Samantha. But you know, the book. So like, um, there's this. I guess you'll say urban or maybe cyber myth uh, in which people say that the creator of Second Life read Snow Crash, a book called Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson and said, I'm gonna make that. So in Snow Crash, there's a place called the metaverse, a virtual world, and everybody goes to the metaverse. Everyone does everything in the metaverse, but they only started doing that once a programmer figured out how to do facial expressions. So why I'm saying this is because I think that, yes, a lot of people don't know Second Life and a lot of people think Second Life is, is sort of old and outdated, although it's, it's actually enjoying a, a huge boom again right now because of COVID. Um, but, you know, definitely one of the problems with Second Life, so one of the, the seductions of Second Life for me, uh, and I think a lot of people given what you can buy in Second Life and what you can do is the beautiful bodies. Okay, the perfect hair, you never have a zit, you know, you don't age. It's just like this, like eternally, you know, this Barbie body, right? Um, so that's really, it's kind of fun to always have, to always look exactly as good as you want to look. Um, but on the other hand, you, the, the facial expressions are horrible, you know? And I see in, when we, but when on Zoom, we get that. We get to have that social, that facial expression and we get to feel like we're really connecting to people. Um, and so I think that the two together, I think that what that when the two, if the two can come to, I mean, we're, you know, if they can come together, we'll have it all. <laughs> but I just mean, I just think it's, I, I feel like I wasn't wrong. I think like virtual worlds are going to be our future. I think it's like, it's so it's so um, seductive to want to have um, perfect skin and uh, have the have the the features of the avatar. Uh, while you're communicating with someone. 
That's great. So I'm, I just going to ask the one last question because it was one of the earliest questions we got. Um, and then I know we're a little bit over, so this will be our last question. Um, but someone sort of asked about in terms of time traveler TM and the themes it presents and the way it presents it, if you, if you, I guess if you either have already had opportunities that you know about where people are using the work in a ver very much an educational way, or if you've thought about doing more episodes or more scenes um, to, to explore other parts of this history, which as you noted, as you went through it are often either not taught at all or taught entirely from the colonialistic um, perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people have asked me uh, that question. Uh, and, you know, so I have like a lot of different answers of, in a way. Like my first answer is, you know, I'm, I'm an artist and uh, this was an artwork. And if you want to use it to teach, then go for it. Like, or if you think it should be taught in schools, please help me because, but I, that's not my job. And I can't, I, you know, this, I did my job with this and I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not an educator in that, in that sense, you know, um, but I'm, I'm certainly, I, you know, I'm certainly open to people looking at it and it's online, you know, so watch it. And um, uh, also um, have I thought of doing other episodes? I miss those characters actually. Um, but I don't want to, I, I still have, I have so many other, there's always ideas coming. So when I run out of ideas, I will probably make, that's when you'll know <laughs> when there's a new time traveler TM episode, the, sequel. the well has dried up. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, ep I mean, there are, there are so many episodes to do. There are so many stories to tell, but you can tell them with other characters and in other ways. I'm also imagining that, you know, now, like I said, it's enjoying a, a bit of a resurgence, but, you know, I was, there was a moment while making Time Traveler TM that uh, Second Life was th uh, threatening to go bankrupt. And I was like, how am I going to finish my episodes, my, you know, my, my whole story? So I have uh, tried to shorten my, um, my projects to make them more in smaller chunks so that they will uh, get finished. And I'm not, you know, I feel very dependent on this platform uh, sometimes. And I'm, I don't really love that feeling. It's another reason why I've, I'd like to just maybe I'm moving out of the virtual world. I think it's, I'm still like in, you know, I keep using the word seduced because I do feel that way. <laughs> I, I really like it, but I also, there's parts of it I really don't like. Um, and so, whereas, you know, clothing is, yeah, that's going to not go away. So yeah. I'm not going to need to always need that. Yeah. Well, uh, again, I'm so thrilled that you joined us on our virtual stage. Thank you, Sconati, for being here and for telling us all about your work. Um, and again, um, as she, as she said, it, and as we put links in the chat, you can also see it online. We do hope you'll come spend some time in the galleries, but it is quite long. So spend some time in the galleries, go home and watch it again or watch the parts you didn't sit through. Um, and so we, we hope that uh, you're inspired to come and take a look at her work and learn and watch the rest of um, the episodes. And unless you have any other parting words for us. Um, I think we're all set for this evening and we appreciate everyone being here and your questions. Um, and yeah. Yes, I just also want to say thank you. Now we'll go out to everyone. I really appreciate the um, attention. <laughs> thank you. Well, everyone have a nice evening and thank you again for joining us. Good night. Good night.